name is Jonathan Hobbs, this is SundayBlesses.com, and today we're going to go over uh, this shape. We're going to go over two stones on the third line with one stone, a opponent stone, on either side of the group. And how to attack this group, alright? This, this is uh, something we learned as uh, double digit Q players. Uh, to make that two stone, to take two stones, put them on the third line, two spaces away from each other to make a base. Um, but when we get opponent stones surrounding that area, we start to have a weak group. Let's look at it. So here's how you can tell you if you have a weak group. Look at what's called eye space. Eye space is something that's really difficult for some beginners to really understand. Eye space is how many points is your group actually making? Because if your group gets surrounded, you have to make two eyes. If there's an insufficient amount of territory to make two eyes, then your group's going to get captured. So if we make a box, all right, with these two stones as the edge. So we start here, go up, then go down, then go over. We have to, in order for us to wall off this territory, we have to create a bot, like put stones on these two lines, these two lines, and these two lines. So if we put a stone on one of the lines, it cannot be territory. So we don't count these spaces as territory. We can only count as one, two, three, four. Now we do need four. Is a, four could be living, but the problem is it's not four in a row. It's four in a box. So this group we can tell is dead. It does not have enough um, territory to make a two-eyed group if it gets completely surrounded. So this group is dead. All right. I know it's kind of weird. They're like, wait a second, that group's not dead yet. It's not off the board. Groups can die before they get off the board. Groups can be dead from the very beginning. You can put a stone down the board and that stone is dead. It will never live. So these stones, if they want to live, they want to find life, they're going to have to go to the center and make their second eye there. Right? We've got enough for an eye on the side, but we need a second eye. So we've got to go to the center and make a second eye. From Black's perspective, he knows what White needs to make that, uh, needs to do to make a second eye, going to the center. So that is his key to understanding how to attack these two stones. Right? We're always looking from our opponent's perspective, which helps us understand things from our own perspective. All right, so I'll leave it to you. Why don't you pause the video and think about it. Where, what are the ways black can attack white? All right, so there's plenty of different ways. All right, so one way we can do it is we can press white down. Um, covering our opponent, making a wall outside their, their low position, their, th uh, their third line low position, is the way in which we can attack. So for instance, uh, I play here. The threat is um, black will push through white's position. Now this stone is, is dust. So white's not going to allow that. Then I jump ahead. All right, I jump and I'm trying to cover these white stones and push into the third line and below. Now this is an important move. White will punch through black shape. Uh, it's very important not to play things like this because we don't we don't want black to be able to comfortably connect all these stones. We want to make the maximum amount of cutting points. So make the maximum amount of cutting points right here. One, two. Connect. Extend. Tari, this stone is garbage now. We don't really care about this stone because there's enough space for white to live here. So I'm going to extend and then white will extend. Um, I, I don't tell you to memorize things very much. I would memorize the sequence if I were you. Um, it's, it's very good. Just review the video again to see it again. It's a very important middle game standard sequence. Let's evaluate it now. Let's, let's look at the, where our stones are. Let's, let's see if we put them in efficient spots. The problem for us is that uh, black got this nice wall in exchange for allowing white to make a living group here. There's one eye and there's definitely, uh, even if we circle here and here, there's four spaces. So we have two eyes. This group has sufficient eye space to live. This group is alive. Um, what about these two stones? These two stones are not making these, are, are destroying the effectiveness of these stones. If black looked like this, Black would be beautiful. This would be a nice, uh, the corners, the corners all locked up. We're moving off into the sides, the side area is locked up. We have this nice little center area. Black is expanding out, all right? But we don't have this stone here. We have white here. These two white stones are erasing the effectiveness of these stones. These stones want to build, they want to grow. Well, they can't build and grow because white's already here. So this is not an effective way to attack from black's perspective. Black's thinking to himself, well, I don't want to build a wall in a spot where I already know it's going to be inefficient. It doesn't make any sense. All right, it's like basically is if you own a store and you want to open up a 7-Eleven and you want to open up, open up the 7-Eleven on a block where there's already a Rite Aid and a Walgreens. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, you've already, you haven't picked a spot where um, 
you're going to have very little competition. So that's kind of what you can think of these two stones as. All right, so glass thinking, okay, fine. Uh, trying to press him down and get thickness in compensation is not a good strategy. What about blocking him off from the center? Because black, this stone is a threat to it, all right? But the threat is that if you play nothing, um, you're going to have a very difficult time coming out into the center to make your second eye white. It's going to be very difficult for you. Uh, the thing is, white is going to go out to the center just like black, uh, I mean, he has to. Otherwise, he, black plays this movement, it's just insufferable. White cannot have that. The thing is, though, any, like the, our strategies that involve moves on this side is, are basically those strategies are saying we want to build this area, but we can't build this area because of these two stones. So while this would normally be a pretty good strategy to build this bottom side because the this, this stone here makes the side bigger, um, this stone is not so effective. All right? It's already being, it's already being um, undone by these two stones. So this is a good a way to attack. You'll see this a lot in um, old style Japanese books to cap here. You also could cap from the other side, but in that case, um, white could jump like this, and then you're sort of flattening yourself at the bottom. Your, your territorial framework's border is going from here, about this line, all the way down here, so you don't want that. So what are we to do? Well, um, I read uh, a book called Attack and Defense um, by Ishida Akira, I believe his name was, and he, uh, in the book he basically said that the heart of attack and defense was the, the knight's book, the came up. So, this is a good time as any to showcase the Kima. Kima basically says, another move, I'm going to play this, and you're going to be pretty much stuck on the side. Um, so what White does is White has to figure a way to get out, because otherwise he's going to blockade it. It works on the same principle as this move, but it's from a different direction. What we're going to try to gain from this move is we're going to try to gain thickness this way, not this way. We're going to try to gain a wall that faces this way, that way, because this side is bigger. Um, try to appreciate that. Try to see that this that this side is the more is the more profitable area. All right, has more potential for profit than this side. Um, let's white's got some white's got to do something. Otherwise, he's going to be dust. So he's going to let's say white plays this. All right. Now black can do all sorts of things at this point. All right. Black could cap him. But black is saying, listen, you're trying to go in the center. I'm going to stop you because the more I stop you in the center, the less space you have to make that second eye you need. You still need that second eye. All right, so um, white might try to come out, but this move doesn't work. Black, well, there's a kema here. We're going to strike at the waist of the kema. All right, and if white plays like this, try to connect the stones. Oops. Um, this white stone is now disconnected from its friends. It's super weak, and the black stones, by uh, association, are a lot stronger than they were. Even if you don't like this move, you can still play a move like this, all right, to really um, put the hurt on white, all right. Um, if white doesn't play anything, then I'll let you think about it. Why don't you think about it? White doesn't play here. Uh, look at look at it real closely. White doesn't play here. What does black play? All right, so black will probably play a move like uh, this, right in between, right? the elephant eye. These two white stones form an elephant eye. We're gonna play right in between them. If white tries to connect, that will start pushing through. Here's an important move. It protects the corner. Also, it opens up uh, this cut right here. Black pushes, white blocks, uh, black cuts. So white has to defend. And really, at this point, since these two stones cannot be captured in the ladder, and there's no snapback, and there's no net, you can simply just cut. And this is, this is starting to look really painful for white. Uh, I want you to kind of appreciate this, because uh, the whole point of this is to try to wall white in. So let's go back a little bit. Let's say we go back to here. Now we can start to really wall him off, all right? We can, we can start to play stuff like this, all right? White plays like this. Um, let's go back here. To this one. Black plays like this, and you can really start to wall him off. Uh, with moves like this. And this side is where we're going to have big moves, like we can play like this, to build a large territorial framework towards the bottom. Or if you want to attack white and push him towards it, there's all sorts of things you can do. But this side is very, very profitable, and this, this move will set you up so that you can attack white from this direction. Um, this is really, um, a good, like I said, this is a very important shape to know. It's good to know these ways to attack it. It's also good to always think about 
which is the profitable way to attack. And we're going to look at another shape and see how that turns so out. So it looks like White has got himself into a bit of a pickle here. Uh, there are two stones um, here. They don't, they're too high, really. One, two, three. Third line makes territory, and they're both high stones, so they're not making any territory. So they're kind of what's called floating. They're floating in midair. We don't really know whether they're going to land or not. So these two stones um, are also not light. The reason I'm saying that is because uh, if they die, then this whole area becomes black. All right, if their death would hand black like a quarter of the board. So they, you can't just lightly throw them away. And also that they're not strong yet. They're also very uh, weak. We don't know whether or not they're going to live because we don't have any third or second line or even first line moves. So we have territory here to, 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 to live with this group. So we gotta do, we gotta um, uh, do something with this group. And what, normally what we do in a situation, we do something called uh, sabaki. Um, I would lecture on sabaki, which introduces the idea, so hopefully you've already heard about this. Um, we got to make sabaki. We have to come out away from this um, disadvantageous situation with a better shape. All right. And so I want to leave that to you. I want you to think about it. What should you do as white to strengthen these stones within blacks? I mean, black has quite the territorial framework here. He has two uh, guard posts here. He has a very strong thick wall here and a tax stone right here. So. Uh, why is quite out number? What should white do? Alright, so good move would be this. A nice light jumping move. It has, it, has, it has a double meaning. First of all, a lot of you may have thought of the attachment move here, which is a good idea. Alright, normally when we're making sabaki, when we're trying to get out of a dangerous situation, we start a close-up close fight. Alright, so but in this case, the problem is that once black, uh, black can play this move, which is uh, very stubborn, and then once um, we play this cut, this stone, does, there's no ladder and there's no net. So when white plays here, white would like to punch through here and cut, but that's not going to happen. So what last one to make shape. Uh, the best white can do is play this test sheet. However, overall, even if white gets this extra, say white plays like this, to get that extra honey, um, or this, or the black can play here, um, this other group is really, really terrible. All right, we've got these two stones already uh, sealing it. This is this is white's broken up into pieces. This is terrible. So we have to think about it um, from the perspective of um, we'd like to play this attachment. This attachment looks really good um, to try to you know do something with the, with the group here. But black can just push through and cut us. So we have to play a move that gets us out into the center. It also threatens to capture the cutting stone. All right, this is this is actually kind of a really cool move. So let's play it like this again. Now let's see what happens if black pushes through and cuts us. All right, we play this. And now look what happens. Let's say black doesn't believe us. Let's say black decides that he's going to do this. All right, then what white can do is white can start to capture this, this, this stone. Oops, of course I like to play there. Okay, when black extends, now we have a bit of a problem from um, a black's perspective. Once white plays here, uh, these two stones are pretty much gone. Black extends. Done. All right, black's captured. Uh, now that the kinds are captured, all that this big group's dead, white's alive, black's territorial framework is annihilated, it's destroyed. So uh, that's pretty, actually pretty bad for black. And that's the entire point of this move, is to allow that to happen. So, uh, let's go back to the original. Let's say, uh, white plays here, and let's say black decides to jump out with these three stones. And then white comes back to play here. All right, and so basically now black's going to probably uh, honey under. In which case, what should we do with black honey unders? What would, what would be the correct uh, technique in this case? Pause the video and think about it. All right, so the correct technique would be to cross cut, right? Uh, we cross cut. We uh, basically say in the local this local vicinity, all the stones are equal in strength. We have two inside stones, two outside stones, all with equal liberties. So if black Ataris, white Ataris, Atari again, and we make shape. And then white has these nice, beautiful shapes and diagonal moves to make eyes with inside black's uh, powerful citadel of uh, doom. 
So we've, we've made some bot here. White can feel very satisfied with this result. White has diffused any attack black could have. All right. Um, maybe it was a little bit difficult to see the attachment, but I hope you can look at the reading and I hope you can um, uh, try to understand it because you'll, if you do enough of these, you'll see shapes like this in your own game and then you'll be able to spot them and your opponent will have no idea what to do. All right, well, I hope you had fun. I hope uh, that this lecture was good for your uh, attack and defense and I'll see you next time.